Hey, welcome back to my channel. Got a little quick tip here. We're gonna grab our multimeter and we're gonna measure five volts. Now, why, why is that? Why do we wanna do that? Well, we need to learn how to measure a five volt rail on a flight controller to make sure that all our peripherals are working correctly. So I wanna show you in this quick tip how to use the multimeter to measure the five volt rail on a flight controller to make sure that these are working. So if you have a crash or you finished your build, you know, you're, you're right in, in the middle of a little build. Basically, you're gonna go through all these peripherals and just check to make sure that you're getting five volts out to them. Sometimes you'll have a flight controller, and I have three flight controllers here. I have a really old one, I have a semi-old one, and the newest, latest, you know, kind of deal flight controller. But all these flight controllers and all these peripherals have something in common. They all run, they all feed out and run off of five volts. So for you to be able to read five volts is pretty important because if you have a crash or you're in the middle of a build, something of that nature, um, you can go in and measure to make sure that you're getting five volts. Okay. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, connect. I'll just grab this one and connect it up and we're going to check this out and see how it's done. Everything here kind of has the same thing in common is a five volt output, okay? So these flight controllers output five volts. This VTX, this VTX, this VTX, this VTX, they all run off of five volts. This camera runs off five volts. That camera runs off five volts. So it's important that if we have issues with our video or we're having issues, let's even pull in the RXSR, okay? It runs off five volts. If you're dropping out of the sky because of RX loss every time you do a punch out, you might want to check to see if your 5 volt regulator is even working. Now, let me just show if you I don't know if you can see on every single thing here like this. Let me pull this out of the way. This VTX will supply 5 volts power to your camera. Do you see that coil right there? That's the 5 volt regulator. It's a coil. And then this one here has one. Turn that over. It has one right here. This one has right, one there's here. There's one, there's one, there's one. So these all supply five volts. And if you were, let me zoom in on this one right, here. This component right here is the five volt regulator. This is a little coil. If you bust this or crack it or smash it, uh, you'll see there's little copper wires wound up in that, okay? And then it's going to switch your 5 volt and it's going to feed 5 volts out to the 5 volt rail. Okay. So when you plug in your flight controller and you're going to power off um, 5 volts to different components. So over here you'd have, I think this is the camera. So one of these pads is going to be 5 volt out for the camera. One of these pads will be 5 volt out for the VTX. This one here will be 5 volt out for the uh I think, don't quote me, but I don't have my schematic, but I think that's for the receiver. I think one of these is five volt out. But basically you get the idea that this flight controller is feeding five volt out everywhere. If there's something wrong with the, with the um, component inside, it won't feed five volts out, okay? And this is primarily what people have issues with that I see on Facebook. You know, if I'm helping people out, you know, they say, oh, I crashed and now, you know, I don't have video. And they show me a picture of their flight controller and I can see this is smashed or cracked in half or something like that. Then you pretty much know. But before you, you know, have to go through hours of figuring stuff out, you can just grab your multimeter and you can measure to make sure you're getting five volts out. Because if you're only getting like 0.2 volts, then you know it's not going to work. You're not going to get a receiver. You're not going to get, you know, things to work. Let me zoom back out. All right. So before I turn a quick tip video into a full our session of using the multimeter and how these components function okay let's just go ahead and do a quick uh measurement we're gonna we're gonna grab this old flight controller okay and we're gonna plug a lipo into it and we're gonna check the five volts coming out of it so let me clear this stuff out of the way all right so we got our lipo so this lipo is about as old as this uh, flight controller here so 
what we're going to do is we're going to plug in this lipo and this uh, regulator and uh, voltage system is going to step up the voltage from this pack so this is a 1s pack which obviously does not create 5 volts so the flight controller is going to do the work for us now if you have a newer flight controller that's 4s capable it's going to step down okay but both of them use the little coil okay so let's make sure that we're getting 5 volts out of this let's turn on our multimeter okay now if you notice on your multimeter this one here is pretty awesome okay I totally recommend this multimeter because it's it's pretty amazing so this is DC voltage here and you can see on the screen let me see if I can light light that up so you have DC voltage here and obviously we're not measuring anything right now it's just kind of floating around uh, the internal components inside are just kind of waving around but we have our DC this is AC voltage we're not dealing with AC we're dealing with DC so we're gonna measure the DC voltage coming out of this rail on this flight controller to make sure that we can power a receiver now I'm gonna flip this over because it makes it easier for you to see let me zoom in on this okay so we're gonna measure the 5 volt uh, rail on this quad on this uh, flight controller the 5 volt rail is ground and 5 volts out and then these are signal pads so this is would be RX and TX so this would be a UART these two right here we're only concerned with the ground and the hot or the ground and the 5 volt out okay and this would be for you know whatever peripheral you're trying to plug into it all right so we'll go ahead and plug in our lipo and we have we have power okay and then we just take our take our ground lead okay you can see here we have common which is ground and then this is to all these settings okay which is our red lead we're just going to grab this ground pad right here and make sure you don't touch these two together while you're doing this because you're going to dead short it if you do so carefully measure from the ground to the hot out you see it's five point see that I'm trying to get my there we go is that better let me turn the light on here so we're going to measure from our ground pad to our five volt now you can see that we're getting five point 08 volts out of that rail so this rail is excellent okay now if you measured out of that let's say you measured um you know three point i think i think like this camera can actually go down to 3.2 volts maybe 3.1 but if you're measuring your five volt rail on your flight controller and it's outputting something in the neighborhood of like 2.2 or 1.9 or something of that nature make sure that you have a, a charged lipo first of all but if your rail is outputting really low results like that then you know that the flight controller is probably bad um, it's not gonna it's not gonna power up your camera it's definitely not gonna power up your VTX and your camera now for demonstration purposes I'm just using all this little micro and nano stuff uh, but this principle goes across all the way to the, I mean, it, it goes all the way to the big boys. I mean, you can measure the 5 volt rail on this F7 30 by 30 board the same way. You're going to plug in a lipo after you remove your props. Please remove your props. Then you'll plug a lipo in here and you'll measure your 5 volt rails on your, on your flight controller. You'll have to take some things apart, but you can go through every single 5 volt rail and make sure that it's outputting correctly um, if you have a burnt trace like you know there's a 5 volt rail over here I'm sorry there's a 5 volt rail in the in the system but there's an output here there's an output here you know whatever the case may be there's several outputs for 5 volts one of those may be bad because there's a bad trace or maybe you did a poor job soldering so you can check it with a multimeter and that's what makes it excellent and yes, I do recommend this. You want to see something, I kind of wait until the end. Anxious. This is so geeky, I love it. I have a I have a very good quality capacitor right here. Okay, this is not for quadcopters. This is for other stuff I'm working on.
but this is a 33 microfarad capacitor. Okay, the problem with cheap, inexpensive, I shouldn't say cheap, let me just say inexpensive multimeters, because I've owned quite a few, uh, it, it usually doesn't measure capacitance very well. It measures voltage good, it measures amperage all right, but it never does capacitance very well. All right, check this out. I'm gonna charge, I'm gonna go ahead and charge it up and then watch. Look at that, 33 microfarad. I mean, this thing is like, I mean, <laughs> a $20 multimeter on Amazon. That's crazy, so, crazy good. Hey, I hope this helped you out on how to measure, you know, measure your rail on your on your quadcopter to make sure all these peripherals are working. And, you know, if it helped you out, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you, man, if you hated it, you give me a thumbs down. It all works. Enjoy the breeze.